Tears Podcast. We're back at the Nest Light, Series of C's, Juice Man, Vertizzi. What What's do? going on, y'all? What's good? What's good? Freak Neat Weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. City lit. Yo, what's up, y'all, man? We got a nice week of sports going on. I can't wait to get a TNT. And we got to talk about what's wrong with these hoes. What's wrong with them? But first of all, man, it's weekend sports. So we got breaking news today during the NBA playoffs that Miss Candace Parker retired. She was a three-time WNBA champion, a two-time league MVP, seven-time WNBA All-Star, as well as seven-time first-team WNBA, as well as a collegiate champion for the Tennessee Volunteers when she was in college, you know, and Naismith Player of the Year, you know, Woody winner in college. Pretty much any accolade you can think of in basketball, she did it. And most notably... That's that sexy dark skin one? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, she likes it. She likes it. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Yeah, man. So, C's, man. You and me both was like in high school when Candace Parker really came on the scene. What did you guys think about her retirement? I mean, she's a student of Pat, man. Pat's one of the probably best basketball coaches of all time. Pat Summit, so a student of that. Um, Candace Parker, Parker was a beast in Tennessee, man. Tennessee was like. You know, came from that Maya Moore era with UConn, that whole old school, the old guard. So, I mean, and then she played overseas, WNBA, you know, so now she's on NBA TV and all this other shit. So, I mean, definitely going to see her around. She uh, deserves all the accolades she got, man. Great player. Yeah, man. Um, when, I, when I saw it, I was like, wow, man. Like, that was kind of like, she, like I said, she started, she was, she came onto the scene when we was in high school. Today. And then by the time she got to WNBA, like, you know, we was in our college years when she was dominating. Um, she won rookie of the year, and the same year she won rookie of the year, she won league MVP. So that should let you that should let everyone know how good she was when she came into the league. Like she basically was the best player from the time she got in the league. And I say up till probably when Maya Moore got into the league around like 2015, 2013, when Maya Moore started basically taking over. But Candace paved the way for a lot of these women that's playing now. Like to be honest. I remember the commercials with her and KD because people forget they was the same draft class. And when they both basically started rising, you know, into the professional ranks, they had commercials and stuff. And they both was like, she was supposed to be the female version of KD. And the only thing I want to say about Candace Parker, I ain't going to talk about her off the court. I'm going to talk about her on the court because I want to respect the career she's had. We forget that she was a walking bucket. Like Candace Parker could shoot the three ball respectively. She was a big, um, small forward. She could post up, and she did post up smaller, smaller women. She could take women off the dribble. She could finish at the paint. She was a great free throw shooter, and she was an amazing rebounder. Like, I'm talking about she had plenty of games where she had 15 to 20 rebounds as a small forward because she was, like, tenacious on the boards, and she was a great defender because, like you said, she's from that school of Pat. When you go to places like UConn, you know, Tennessee and now South Carolina, you're going to leave there as a great defender. And she was a great defender when she came into the league, you know. So, hey, if you're a woman and you love women's basketball or you just saw like Caitlin Clark, Candace Parker is someone that if, if we was to say Mount Rushmore and WNBA players, I would not be mad if you had on your Mount Rushmore. You know what? I, I say it like this. She, she's a beautiful woman. And uh, I thought she retired six years ago because when I started seeing her on T and 10 Sports, you know what I'm saying? Doing an announcement thing. I thought she was already retired. I didn't know she was still playing ball. So I really thought she retired in 2018. So can y'all just imagine real quick if when they had to end out L money when she was in college, she would have oh, she 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 Don't even get a start on the NIL shit. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah. Shout out to Candace Parker. Salute to her. Um she was one of the one of the greats in the, the woman's game. Um, I can't I ain't got nothing but good things to say about her. You know what I'm saying? I hope she continues I hope she continues her, her career in the broadcast booth. 
to keep doing her thing, you know what I'm saying? That's right. But, um, so moving on to another great collegiate player who then did amazing things at the professional level. We found out Reggie Bush is going to finally get his Heisman back. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. About damn time. Hey, Juice, man. It's someone who basically, you probably was in high school when Reggie was doing his thing in college. Know, I don't remember. I don't like, know. hey, what, what, what you think about this? You know, my mom was like that. How did he lose it? How did he lose it again? Um, they, they basically felt like his parents was taking money. I think it was reports. Oh, that bullshit. Uh, a sports car, oh, a house in L.A. Oh, and he gave his people all that oh, good goodness. stuff. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he deserved to have it back. He should have never lost it in the first place, man. Keep it moving. See no one. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's crazy to see. That's why I said don't get us started with this NIL shit. Because it's like if that shit had been around back then, think of all the players that lost – scholarships or awards and other shit, all the money they could have made. So it kind of fucked up how uh, they did them. I seen a meme with uh, Martin, man, where Martin was at his fam- his uh, high school reunion. He was like, yeah, fuck all y'all. <laughs> That's basically how Reggie should have been. Like, he deserves it, man. But, I mean, he was a monster, man. He, not the greatest career in the NFL. He did his thing. But college, man, like, definitely one of the top players of that era, just like period, man. So, congratulations, man. Finally. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad he got it back. Um, he should have been got it. I think probably the main reason why he got it was probably um, Shay Shay and um, doggone Manziel. Um, because Manziel said y'all need to give him his eyes and back. And then not too long after that, maybe maybe I think that interview was probably a month ago, maybe maybe two months at the most. And now he has his back. So that's all it takes is a is a, is a, a coked out white man to tell the people <laughs> what to do and they go do it. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, but that should, that should tell you something though, man. Because as much as I love people like Tim Tebow, because I think you know what he does off the field is amazing. Like we can we can say what we think about John Mazzell lifestyle, but I, I salute him though because he said that he wasn't going to attend the Heisman ceremony no more until Reggie got his Heisman back. Like. Let's be real. Like we, we, we can make fun of that, but there's a lot of people who be on that stage. Y'all watch the hot. Y'all, y'all see like maybe RG three, T Bow, a whole bunch of like well known people. Bay Sanders and that they had the whole commercial. All y'all should have felt that way. It shouldn't. It should, that, that's your point, Rose. It shouldn't have taken Johnny Menzel, the person that we deem to be a cokehead, to say the right thing is for Reggie to have his Heisman back. Because for those who watch them play. And for those the younger listeners, if you did not see Reggie Bush in college, I can't explain how good he was. I, this, it's almost like an old head trying to you explain to me how good Barry Sanders was. Because oh because the stuff that Reggie did in college, we ain't never seen that shit before at the time. Like, he was, people forget this, he was a returner too. Uh-huh. Like, like USC, and he was even a full-time running back. He was splitting carries. Like, he was rushing for almost 2,000 yards in the season. Why he was splitting carries with Lindell White. And for those who don't know Lindell White, he went in the first round of the fucking draft. Mm-hmm. So, hey, man, shout out to Reggie Bush, man. You know, and he was a great college player, man. He was one of my favorite players um, growing up. Now, going back to these professional um, athletes, you know, Tank Dell, who is coming off an amazing rookie season, is, is in line for a great second year with the pieces they added in Houston, was at a Florida club this weekend. That a shooting occurred. The shooting had nothing to do with him. He was not involved in the altercation. Was he there? He was at the club. It was his fault. And then basically, 10 people got shot, all lower body injuries. Oh, shit. He got shot, but it was a minor wound. Seeds, what's your thoughts? His fault. It's kind of one of those things, man. When you go out, you pose yourself at risk. So, I mean, it's, it's one of them things, man. Hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, he's good. Nothing, you know, hurting his season or whatever. So, Hey, be careful, man. It's crazy because you talking about don't hurt his season. He was injured. He ended his last year. I think he had a broken leg. Yeah, he he, he ended the season on a high off. Yeah, so it's like, so he just he just got on his feet and out. So he got shot in the lower body too. They didn't um say, but they said pretty much all the people got injured in the lower body. So shit, lower body shooters. Don't be scared. Don't be scared, lower body shooters. Yeah, man, that time. I ain't trying to catch that man squad charge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lower body shooters. Yeah. You scared. You scared. Hit them low. Hit them low. Hey, man. That's what they do in the NFL now. They, they hit them low. But, um, 
Yeah, man. Nah, man. I, to, to your point, C's, I feel like, and I'm, I, I know, you know, some of y'all are not going to hear this, but if y'all do, if, you are, if you're a professional athlete and you're young, man, I ain't working on to the club, bro. You, you got too much money, throw a house party, have your own security, bet who come to the club, pat people down. Like, Dale Jeter did this for years. Dale Jeter threw, threw wild parties, and we didn't even know he was doing this to pretty Mill, much. Uh, Mill of night, was it? Was yeah. it even going to night? And we didn't know he was throwing these parties to pretty much when he retired, when people say, yeah, Dale Jeter threw crazy parties. But the first thing he did, you came in the door, you got patted down, and you had to put your phone in some kind of box or, or yeah. bag or something. Right. And there was no evidence, man. You, you mean no evidence or no did it? <laughs> no, I did mean it. that too, man. But yeah, man. Hey, man. If you got enough money, bro. If you making like two fifty a year, man. Hey, man. Just just throw a house party. Get get a nice little mansion, and you got some homeboys. Have your homeboys go in the city. Your homeboys can pay these girls five hundred dollars to come to the party and have yourself a good time, man. Oh, tricking at its finest. I'm just saying. No, like, you if, you wanna, if you want, if all you gotta do is say I, mansion party. That's what you going to the club for. You going to the club to see bitches. So, man, hey, party. man, pay these hoes just a couple hundred dollars to come to chill with y'all, man. Don't go to the club and get a section and be involved in some bullshit. Hey, y'all, young folks, young athletes, do not pay these girls anything. You are the party. They come to see you. That's right. They need to pay you to walk in the door to be in your presence. That's right. Ten dollars at the door. I mean, that's cool. Huh? Like, I ain't got a problem with that, man. Shit, what, what, what you, what you think, um, Juice, man? Yeah, I agree. Like, you know, um, well, I just went to a mansion party last night, and I had a ball. But it was free. It was like, but at the same time, everybody kind of knew everybody. So it wasn't like um, we had to worry about ops because there was really no ops. The ops were probably like the ladies. Oh, look what she wore. Or, you know what I'm saying? Some crazy bullshit like that. But it wasn't like we had anything to worry about because you gotta think to get to the to get to the spot in the first place is nothing but crazy police. You know what I'm saying? Then you gotta run through security to get into the, the complex and everything. So it was it it was what it was. But yeah, man, why not throw a nice mansion party? Like if you got that type of money, why not buy a party mansion? Game did it. Like like when he got into his shit, what he do? He came to Atlanta. Hey, mansion party. Every other weekend, all we heard was, oh, gang got the mansion party. Mansion party. Pull up. And you see game out there in the goddamn rolls. Like, nigga, nigga, what the fuck? Like, don't you supposed to be in Cali? Nigga, on the run. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so it is what it is, man. Yeah, man. When you get money like that, go ahead and get your mansion and shit. Just throw your parties and do what you need to do. Man. Have proper security. Keep, it, keep it cracking like that, man. You got any thoughts, Rose? No, I gave my thoughts about them low body shooters. All right, cool, yeah, man, man. Yeah. Hey, um, you know, Tank Dale, I think, went in the third or fourth round. And look, that just shows you can find value later in the rounds of the NFL draft. Speaking of the draft, the draft oh was just this week. We all watched the first round, but then they had the second round, Friday and Saturday. You know, are there any takeaways from the draft or any players that you are excited to see this upcoming year sees? So my predictions on Phoenix going in the first round were right. I didn't think he would go where he went, but that shit kind of surprised me a little bit. Besides that, man, I still say I'm, I'm a proponent of you ain't going to see results from the draft probably for another two, three seasons. I mean, there's not too many immediate players, but y'all probably know better than I would. So, I mean, decent, decent, decent draft class. I was pissed, man. Hey. Atlanta was a lantern. You know what I'm saying? This is like, nigga, what the fuck? Y'all don't pay goddamn Kirk Cousins 180 and then y'all got another quarterback? Man, come on. I understand. What y'all think about that? I think he needs some backup, but I, what the fuck? Like, I didn't, I didn't get this shit at all. Yeah, I was highly upset, man, because like I said on the pod last week, man, hey, man, if you're going to pay him that money, then you should use that money to get an edge rusher so we can solidify that defense because we got good pieces everywhere else, but we need a pass rush. But if you wanted to get, you know, um, Kirk, I mean, Michael Phoenix Jr. in the first round, guess what? He was going to be there for you. And instead of paying 180 for Kirk, you could have spent that money on Brian Burns, a good pass rusher that went to New York. You could have spent that money on Daniel Hunter. You could have spent that money on Patrick Queen, probably the best linebacker in the game right now. You could have spent that money, traded for um, T. Higgins, and paid him because he won a contract. Like, you could have spent that money in so many different places to solidify our roster and then 
have the benefit of having that rookie quarterback contract. I will say I do like what the Falcons did the rest of the draft. They drafted like four defensive linemen, you know, a decent defensive tackle, two defensive ends, and a linebacker who basically is an edge rusher. So I'm just going to consider him a defensive lineman. Um, they drafted a running back and a receiver. We didn't really need that, but hey, they'll probably be special team guys and they'll probably come in on third and fourth downs when we need them. But, you know, the fact they got them defense alignment, that's what we really needed. We needed help on the pass rush. And before I give it to Rose, my two two of my biggest takeaways was I did not like that um, Jaden Daniels went to Washington because I, I, I'm a true believer of where these quarterbacks go can determine their success. Had he went to New England, I felt like he would have been set up for success. I feel like Drake May would probably have a decent career in New England because I feel like they're going to set him up. And lastly, Jets, you fucked up. Brock Bowers, I think on most boards, was rated the second best player in this draft behind Marvin. Like Marvin Harris Jr. was the first player who was, everybody said he can't miss. Like you can't miss him. Brock Bowers was his next player because he's a George Kittle mixed with a Travis Kelsey in the sense of he blocks. In today's NFL, it is rare to find a blocking tight end that can actually be a passing threat, and Brock Bowers can do that. He does both at a high level. You could have had him in New York. Like, like, bro, we saw last year with Gary Wilson. Y'all don't have nobody else to pose a threat in that passing game except for, that, except for number 17. Y'all needed some help. And, you know, so, hey, man, Brock Bowers, man, I hope, I hope your career in Vegas goes well. You ain't got a quarterback, but you you there with Adams, man. Hopefully he show you the ropes and hopefully you put up numbers because I'm projecting him to be a top five tight end his rookie season. Yeah, I think he is going to be. But yeah, my my first thoughts I'm was the Atlanta Packers because they did some Green Bay Packers stuff, and Atlanta's always trying to pack somebody booty. And that's and I, after I thought about it, that's what I thought they did. I think they packed that booty. They effed us. But but when the draft when the pick got picked, I was excited. I was like, oh snap, we got another quarterback. We got another quarterback. But then I thought about it, I was like, hold on. We didn't pay we didn't pay my cousin a hundred million dollars. Guaranteed what eighty, bro. So somebody in the office was so like, guaranteed a hundred. Somebody in the office was some perks. So I was like, hold on, I was like, hold on. But then you saw that black man try to come. Trying to explain to that white man why we made that pick, but but but, but then Ashanti, they knew that we not we can't win the Super Bowl with, with with what we got, so they said we go set up the future and make sure that we don't go through another three or four seasons with Mariotas <laughs> and, and Ritters. <laughs> yeah, we got to get rid of uh, rid of exactly. <laughs> so. I, I, I well, Ritter said, Ritter said, I'm going to bring Atlanta a Super Bowl. Bro, you played so bad that we got Michael Phoenix Jr. Yeah. You might have fulfilled that promise, nigga. <laughs> he, he, he fulfilled the promise because he, he he got us he got us a higher draft pick than we than we should have had. And, but we should have been closer. We should have been able to get Daniels. If we win a Super Bowl with Michael Phoenix, you think we should send Desmond Ritter a ring? <laughs> no, nah, we, should, we should send him some black flowers, some, some, some black roses. Black and miles. Yeah, that's about it. But um, that's that's all I got, man. But it, the draft was fun to watch. But I was excited when they drafted him. But it, but it was crazy because I remember sending Vertizi, um, the 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 mock draft to him going number eight. And and when I saw him, I was like, huh? it was kind of complete press. And then I said to him, he was like, not nah, not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't get wide receiver. But 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 now that now that I slept on it and thought about it, man, I think it's, I thought I thought it was a good pick, man. I'm I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. So what team? Because over? because according to Juice, man, we was never gonna get another black quarterback, and now we got one. Yeah, and also Cousins is excellent pwn. So it's like when he get hurt, who gonna pick up the slack? We Gucci. So Buddy's gonna start this year. Cousins, <laughs> Cousins go, he ain't gonna make five games. Man, I'm not paying a nigga fifty million on the bench. Oh, no, 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 because you gotta think he's gonna get hurt because we ain't got no offensive line. So he do like fifth game. Cousins on the bench. What was your question, Steve? So overall, who had the best? Who? What team did the best to you? Like overall selection, like just in this draft this year. A, a, t- a tie between the Bears, yeah, yeah. and the um, I would say the Ravens. Because the Ravens pretty much, to me, they do the best at identifying a play that fits their system. 
We may not know the, the motherfucker they drafted, but they found someone who I feel like is going to be a Raven. But the Bears, you, you did with the Texans until last year. You got your quarterback, and you got somebody to build your defense around. So, so shout out to them. Mm-hmm. Um, you talk about the immediate. You talk about the future, Rose. Let's talk about this immediate future. The <laughs> NBA playoffs. Okay. We all basically the first week into it, we've seen some games that was ugly, but we've seen some games that have been truly amazing. Seeds, what do you think about this first round playoff so far? It's a little bit better than what I expected, man. Um, hey, Knicks take, nigga. Knicks take. I told y'all, it's the, it was their first few games. I was like, it's over. It's over. I was like, Philly cannot do it. it, it fucking EB, what's the fuck is his name? He, EB, you said right. would have to drop 50 every fucking game for them to finish it up. For them to win, he's going to have to drop at least 40 points a fucking game. It's not. They can't do it. The How the Celtics do it? How the Celtics do it? Celtics, um, they, man, that's that's another series that's over. To me, that shit is over. It's like, it's over. they yeah. can't come back. Celtics can't come back? They, Celtics can. No, Celtics will win. The Heat cannot come back from that shit. Okay. There's another one that's like, when we talk about, we we going to get to y'all team. I'll leave that to y'all. Um, and the Suns, man, like, it's it's the Timberwolves. Like, it's just, it's, that one's over. And then, with the Mavericks, Kyrie is fucking balling right now. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. That's good fucking basketball, but that's one of them series. Like, this probably might be the second best player-wise, like, game-wise. It might be the second or best game, best series in the fucking... That, that series was pretty good for the most part. It's been Mavericks back and forth. The Mavericks, the Mavericks, the Mavericks and the Clippers. The, the series has been good, but the games have been trash. If you're watching them, as far as like action wise, I I I, I, that, I agree with that. And then like man, the Pacers, man, like it's 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 hard with them injuries. Like they the Bucks coming back. Man, nah, fuck that, bro. Fuck all the bullshit, bro. You ain't, hey man, I, I want I want Rose to talk about the Cavs and Magic Magic series. Oh yeah, they tied up. They yeah, talk talk about the five people that been watching that series. <laughs> <laughs> I watched, the, I watched the, the I watched the first game, and and it was pretty boring. <laughs> but then it, the magic came back and and they tied it up. So it it's actually coming true from what I said. But ain't nobody ain't nobody probably watching it. <laughs> ain't nobody probably watching it. But shoot, a lot of people ain't. I know I ain't watching a lot of it either. Cause I I try to watch um Dallas and the Clippers today. And I was like, no, they keep talking about these Dallas. I said, oh, they up 2-1. So I guess they are good. I watched it. They down by 30 <laughs> in the first half. I'm like, oh, turn this off. They came back because Kyrie had a good game. But but I, it's like Luka had to get in. I think Luka had a triple-double. But it's like, what's all that for? You doing all that in a loss? Like, who cares? Like, you still lost. Like, and you was at home. So it's like you can't you can't be at home down by thirty and and think and, and try to come back. Yeah, you try to come back. Yeah, whatever. But Clippers gonna win this series, man. I think so. And, and Kawhi, I Kawhi. think you need to do what Candace Park did. You tired? Yeah. Oh wait. Yeah, man. To me, man, the best player in the playoffs has been Ant Man so far. Like Ant Man has showed that you know what I should have been the MVP conversation because what he's done. And fuck the box score. If you watch the games, he's taking the defensive assignment of guarding KD at times, guarding Booker at times, and guarding Bradley Bill at times. Like, this man had a block the last two minutes of a game to basically stop the Suns from coming back on them the other night. What Ant-Man is doing offensively, like, he's, like, I was watching, like, Bradley Bill was trying to guard him, and he was giving Bradley Bill buckets. They put KD on him, and KD's a much bigger player than him. And you know what he did? The same yeah. fucking thing. He yeah. gave KD buckets. Yeah. Like game, I knew this was going to be a different series after the first game when he dropped like 30 on KD, when KD tried to guard him, and he walking backwards. Think about this now. Think about how bold you got to be to be walking backwards from a nigga, looking at a nigga, and you yell at a nigga, yeah, old-ass nigga. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I thought about these playoffs. It's a lot of old ass niggas getting beat up by young niggas, man. Like I sent, I think I sent Rose and uh, 
Juice made a video yeah, I seen it, yeah. where it's like it's the end of a fucking era. Steph not in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. LeBron getting beat up by that by that suburban nigga Jokic. Goddamn, Katie getting beat up by this Georgia kid. Shout out to them Georgia boys, man. Right, Patrick right. Troy tried to tell y'all like twenty years ago. We come in and we here. You know, we in the league finally. Um, and um, Kawhi, this nigga, we ain't seen him in the playoffs except for yeah. one game. So it's like all <laughs> <I bet you. laughs> so all the old niggas. It's like, hey, bro, it's time for these young niggas. It's time for Ant Man. It's time for Jokic. It's time for Shade, bro. It's these young niggas is taking over, man. And they letting y'all know we here now, nigga. And Ant Man. For, y- for y'all to understand how young he is, this nigga's 22. Oh, shit. And he's already tied K- KG's record for most 30-point games in the playoffs. Shout out to you, man. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts, Juice? Man, I know, I know you you know, got your sports taken away, but I know you at least heard something at the barbershop. That's, no, no, no. That's why I'm hearing it here now. So that's why I'll be asking you, know, what's going on? What's going on? You ain't caught on yet? What the fuck? Uh, uh, I got it. You, you got go ahead, go ahead, just man. No, no, no. For for Ant Man, uh, you got to win a championship for me saying anything about this thing. <laughs> uh, I, 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 <laughs> that's I, on that one. I, I don't give a fuck what you're doing in goddamn playoffs, nigga. You got to make the championship and win. I'm an MVP conversation. I don't know what that is. Sure. That, there's, there's rumors that Jordan is daddy. Oh, his no, real daddy. Jordan might be his daddy. <laughs> The Jordan said the other day that that dude a beast. <laughs> you can't, you probably can't acknowledge it out loud, bro. Like that's my son. It's, it's good now. You know what that means? Yeah, but but one person we we left out. I guess it, I guess we looked over him. But man, shout out to to AI or JB, whatever you want to call him, Jalen Brunson. Man, he he broke the the Knicks um, playoff scoring record today Knicks with forty. Team. With forty seven and ten. Ooh, that's the light skin one with the twist. Yeah, so oh, man, shout baby, shout man. shout out to him, man, because he because he, 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 he was balling, man. Shout hey, you, out to him. You, you two can speak on this more, and we're gonna move on. But it, it, the basketball do feel different when the Knicks are winning. They ain't been winning since y'all was watching in the nineties, bro. Right, right, like, right. cause me and Carl, we don't know nothing about the Knicks winning the playoffs. Ain't, ain't no more you. Like, if they win this series, this this gonna be new for me. <laughs> me, me and C's. This gonna be new for us. <laughs> So shout out, shout out to Jalen Brunson and playing for the Knicks. New era, man. New era. Well, he still with that. He still with that chick. I don't know who Jalen Brunson was. He probably was a white bitch. He light skin, man. You know, all, I know, no, all, I know all these niggas right are white bitches. Y'all saw the NFL draft. Y'all saw all these white bitches they paraded. So Mo Bow tried to tell y'all, man, be submissive so you can be at the draft with, with a nigga. Oh, y'all don't be submissive. That's why all these white bitches at the draft. Uh-huh. But um, so TNT, y'all. Okay, Dynamite. Boom. So we had something explosive happen in the CSRA today. Um, there was a shooting in the Augusta Mall. Ten people got um, injured, but none, none was fatal, though. No, none, none was fatal. They, they, the details from the shooting was apparently it was two people shooting at each other. Some people got caught in the crossfire. Um, I want to say the shooting started out. What story was? It was. Uh, I can't think of the story. It wasn't J.C. Penney's, but it was one of the stories that it started in, and it just kind of just flowed. They shut the mall down. Um. See, tears or no tears? Uh, it's hard for me to say. No tears, man. It's just one of those. It's just gonna happen. It's it's about to be summertime, nigga. You know how it is. We we'll start wide. Get hot outside. Yeah, outside. Be outside. You know, it's <clears throat> crazy happening at the mall. You know. So I mean, no in the streets. Yeah, man. Um, I got tears, man, because you know we we we've talked since we've had the podcast. So much about shootings and mass shootings going on, and it's sad that this happened in our own backyard. And you know, I man, like like I always say, I really don't know what the answer is, man. But the people who get paid to make these decisions, they gotta figure out, they gotta figure out something, man. Because there's like, this is a Sunday. There's point like all of us have been to the mall before. We might not have been to the mall recently. Some of us have kids that are of the age of going to the mall. Like when I when I woke up and. I got a text from um, you know, Rose about that. Like that, that disturbed my soul, bro. I'm be real. That disturbed my soul because, like, you know, I know, I know you're looking at me, Juice Man, but it disturbed my soul because you could literally go to the mall for some simple shit and some simple shit like, hey, your wife wants you to grab something, so you go to the mall, mm-hmm. and now you getting shot for some bullshit. Like, Damn, yeah. I am. like Damn, that, I am. like that, 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 that shit's sad, man. We got, we got to figure, we got to figure this solution out, man. It's crazy because um it, it and actually it's funny to me because w- when we talk about this I think about oh my goodness damn why my mind like this okay 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 oh, we talking oh, about a shooting age. yeah we talking about a shooting 
Are we talking about Augusta Mall? And yeah, we talking about nobody get hurt. But oh, oh, I know what I'm talking about. The new shit. These, these new kids. You on the phone with your ops. You FaceTiming your ops. Hey, I, you my favorite op. How you got a favorite op, nigga? Hey, we gonna be at the mall. How you got love we gonna be at the mall pop, 2 p.m. Pull up, nigga. Pull they, up. Pull they up. Try, they try to relive the MySpace, MySpace days. I don't get five. this shit because, like, like on site, like, like you gotta think your your op is on site. So I got an op. When I see this nigga on site, I'm supposed to shoot and kill this nigga. But yet I'm on the phone with this nigga. Like, oh, I see you. Like, nigga, why we start doing this dumb ass shit? Like, oh, when I, when I get you, I'm, I'm gonna slide on you, nigga. Uh, like, come on, man. This shit is getting ridiculous. I, I, be, I be seeing this shit. I'm just, this shit is funny. Like, that what happened. Like, oh, uh, yeah, I see you. Oh, you by yourself? Yeah, I'm by myself. You by yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should got me and my crew. For real, I got me and my crew. All right, y'all already know what I'm saying here. Right, right. Let's, let's see who hit who because we, we don't know how to shoot. Like, nigga, what the fuck is this bullshit coming on, man? For real, it's, it's funny to me, man. The young, these, these young, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I got tears because it's like, it's like, dog, y'all, y'all shooting in the mall, y'all, that means y'all have no, they have, they have no care for other human beings or other, other life because in the mall, there's, there's kids riding in those little motorcycle things, bears, there's mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff, families, and it was crazy because I was actually in the mall yesterday, and I don't hardly ever go to the mall. And when I do go to the mall, I go to the store, and then I go back to the car. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I was in the mall yesterday, um, me and Susie Q for for a quite little minute. You know what I'm saying? Went to the jewelry store. We went um, in the the cologne with well, the perfume store. Mm-hmm. But it was like it was crazy because I, I was actually, I actually had to walk in the mall. Cause I don't go there so often. So I walk to one end thinking the store I was going to was on that end. I said, oh, I ain't on this end. I had to go walk all the way across to the other end. So that could have had that could have been me. You know what I'm saying? Or that could have been Susie Q, you know what I'm saying? Been so anybody in the crossbody, yeah. Yeah, so it's like y'all, y'all shooting them all. I remember when I was growing up, we used to well, I never did it, but people used to fight in the mall. Like, but as y'all y'all shooting in the mall, like, man, what what are y'all thinking about, man? That's just that's just one of the dumbest things, in, and it puts all those cameras in there. Like, you think you go get away? Eventually, you go to get caught. So it's like these people are, and you know it had to be some young folks because people are. These young folks are so they think they so smart, they so stupid. You know what I'm saying? It's and it's ridiculous, man. But I think they need to they need to start locking these kids up and not letting them out. You know what I'm saying? They get locked up. They get slapped on the wrist. They need to stop letting these kids out, man. Because you want you want you want to be a thug. You want to be a you want to be a gangster. Well, be a be a gangster in, in jail. You want to be a boss? You know what I'm saying? Ain't gonna be a booty bandit in jail. They gonna, yeah. be, about? They gonna be a booty warrior. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or a victim of a booty warrior. That's what they need, warrior. though. But like, I ain't got my gun. I don't know how to squab a nigga. Yeah, like. Lights out. What the world? Like, why? Why do you need a gun inside the mall? Like, it's like you know, you go to these public spaces and it's like you know the cops gonna be there. Yeah, they gonna be on that shit like cold red, cold red. Get these motherfuckers. That's just dumb, man. Man, hey, speaking of dumb stuff, man, you know, and speaking of how to squabble. So this truck driver was fighting like twelve people. Huh? Yeah, this truck driver was fighting like twelve people. He was carrying a load of crab legs. What was it? Worth $30,000? $30,000 worth of frozen crab legs. $30,000 worth of crab legs. And these young niggas basically, you know, tried to jump him so they could steal it. Was they successful in stealing this seeds? Yes, they were successful. This shit was orchestrated. This shit was like the same way we did like two weeks ago. We had that story about the the Brinks, not the Brinks truck, but one of those. Oh, the the Dement. Yeah, one of the Dement sites. Mm -hmm. This shit was orchestrated. They pulled up with four trucks. Offloaded thirty thousand dollars worth of refrigerated truck. You know how everybody knows how big these trucks are. Four trucks. That shit is planned. So, and then the crazy thing is they had they've had other robberies in that same area. The same so, so area. You talking about niggas doing oceans 11, 12, and nine all right. in real life? Yeah. yeah. On, on, on seafood. <laughs> seafood. The price of food is too damn high. That is George Clooney when you need him. Oh, yeah, I mean. It, it, 
it's tears, man, because I mean, this man really, honestly, man, he just trying to do his job. So I mean, like, if it's one person, he's like, you know, you gonna fight somebody? He's like, what the fuck are you doing with this trailer, man? Like, back the fuck off. Then you know they beat your ass. <laughs> you get jumped because they trying to take the whole load. It's like, damn, man. So. The shit is insured. You should let that shit go. As soon as the motherfuckers ran I'm saying, home, but you, you on go. the road for weeks at a time trying to just make a drop. You go, got to go piss, got to take a shower, whatever, get food. And like, damn, that's, that's it's crazy when you. I think he was actually in the in the truck sleep. And then they tried to rob him when he was he was actually in the truck. Okay, he was in the truck sleep. Yeah. And then he like, oh, snap. So he'd get out, try to protect the load. And, and he tried he to protect got, the load. work. Yeah, he got the it makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy for him that he didn't get shot. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Bro. That's what I'm saying. Hey, that's what we need. Oh, 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 what was in the truck? What was in the truck? Crab legs. <laughs> that's not like that would be a horrible way to go out, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So like yeah. you say, it was orchestrated. They knew, hey, we might have to whoop this nigga ass, but don't kill him. Yeah, but so I can't complain. Hey, well, all ends well. You know what I'm saying? Well, all this shit. Yeah, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got no tears for the crab legs. So, <laughs> but but for all for all all y'all all y'all. Crab leg hoes that all y'all do is eat seafood and, and drink liquor and, and, and smoke weed. You know the price going up now. You use baby wipes on your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you know that price going up now. Today's price nah, is not nah, yesterday's nah, price. Nah, <laughs> that's true, man. Yeah, I got tears for some of the fact of, bro. When did crab legs? I I just want to know because growing up, I just don't remember crab legs being a popular delicacy. Like I just don't remember it being something that everyone just like not like bro. I'm just being real, bro. I just, was I, I just don't remember crab legs being something that everybody had to have. Like we're going to get crab legs now. Like on social media, that's all you see hoes talk about. I want crab legs. I want, like when I was in my data career, I never had hoes in my younger years wanting to get seafood. Now when I talk to hoes, the first place they want to go on a very first date is really? some uh, seafood. <laughs> So oh, my like, dad, red, red lobster is on the list. We can't do red and, lobster. And, and that just shows you like how popular crab legs are because like you literally got people who robbing a crab legs truck. So hey man, you know, like you were saying, um, Juice Man, you know, hey, you should have let him have it, but I can't be mad at the driver because the way some of these contracts are set up, they make the driver liable for stolen stuff, you know, unless they can prove that he had nothing to do with it because you know, we got a history of drug part of these it. scams, you know. I mean, I probably would just say, fuck it, man, ain't nothing but crab legs, man. Just leave me 10K. I can take 20, 20K over, over for the crab legs. Just leave me 10K, man. You get nothing. You know, give, give me a black eye, you know, and just, just take 20K so I can go back to my boss and be like, I tried, man. You know. Um, but talking about, like, people basically scamming, man. So we talked about a cash app scam months ago. So there's this woman who was going around acting like I guess she was in dire need, whether she was homeless, she had car trouble, she needed gas. She was basically saying, "Hey, can I use your phone?" She was going to public businesses. They was get they, they people was giving her the phone, and within like one woman said, "Man, the girl had my phone less than three minutes," and she was cash in large amounts from like hundreds of dollars. Like one woman said, she got hit up for nine hundred dollars on cash app. Man, I got tears, man, because me and C's talked about this last night. I read the comments, and everyone is calling these people stupid, saying, why would you give your, the girl your phone? Why you didn't have your cash app, app locked? This just shows, bro, you can't do good shit no more, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't be a good person no more and just try, like, you, like when you hear a sob story, like, hey, man, can I call my uncle to pick me up because I'm stranded? Because I've been there before. That's right. I've given someone my phone before because they needed to call somebody. That's right. And I'm pretty sure most of us have done that. Yeah. I've been in situations where I needed to get picked up somewhere. My phone was dead for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And the niceness of a stranger gave me their phone, right. and I called my partner or whatever, or someone in my family, they picked me up. Man, this just like, me to the point now, you can't even be nice no more. Because people look, truly look at niceness as a weakness. Mm. And that's just, that, that, that brings tears to my eyes, because we, we need people in the world to not take advantage of people that's, you know, nice. Man, so, I mean, for me, man, it's tears, man. But, I mean, it goes back to cybersecurity, data protection 101, man. You using all these apps, everything's so convenient. You leave yourself liable and open. So it's like you ain't got no code for your cash app. They ask you, do you want to put a pin for this transaction? It's the same thing you do with a bank app. You, you, the bank app forces you to put a pin on your shit. 
log in, make transactions. You got to do verifications. It's the same thing with Cash App and Time. You see these scams. What do you turn on the news every day? What do you hear about? A hack, a scam, phone calls. Scam. Scam. So it's like, it's unfortunate that it happened to so many people. I'm glad they got her car and the woman on tape or whatever, but I hope everybody gets the money back. But I mean, it's, it's tears, man. Man, they ain't get that shit back. That shit spent. That, and Cash Up already put a little thing saying that if you get scammed, they're not liable, man. When you send some money to somebody you ain't never sent before, first thing they say is, if this is a scam, we ain't giving you your money back, nigga. That shit over with. But there are checks with the with the banks, link bank accounts. So that's some shit gonna come from that. I got I got tears because Shotty gonna get caught because she's on camera. <laughs> Like it was a slick lick at first, but yeah, you gonna get caught, Shotty. And I got tears for the um the people that got their money took, cause cause, cause cause people aren't really thinking like like somebody like like one time I was um I was Ubering and the dude was like I, he said oh I put the wrong address in and I was like well shoot you gotta change your drop off he's like oh I can't use my phone without Wi Fi and I'm thinking like. Okay, well, shoot. I got Wi Fi on my phone. Shoot, here. Can you use my phone for Wi Fi? Let him hook up to my Wi Fi so he can change the location or whatever. So so I can get broke off. So, But it was like, but it didn't, then I never even thought about like, oh, snap. He could have then been trying to go through or whatnot or whatever. You know what I'm saying? People aren't even thinking about this stuff like that because it happens so quickly. You know what I'm saying? You're just trying to get through your day. You're working. You're doing things or, or whatnot. And and lots of people like you're talking about. See, unless you have a a corporate job or or something like that, the cybersecurity and all that, regular people don't know nothing about that. That's that's not something regular people or not just regular people, but people that's not in a, a corporate or professional business. They don't they that's not even on their their radar. They don't even think about that. That's not even something that and it's on my radar. I I I have to do those trains and things like that, but it, that's not something that you. On an every everyday thing that you're thinking about, like yeah, you're right, man. Unless you got a state job or a corporate job, like uh, your job at Burger King ain't sending you emails saying, "Hey, take this um, cybersecurity training." Yeah, so 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 those people that they have no idea about none of that stuff. So it's like, I know I know you do because that's that's because you you enter things like that, but but other people they have no idea. So it's like they need. Either they need to put it on TikTok, that, that cocaine line, or or, or something. But but I, I don't know. But but like Vertice said, it make you not want to help people out. But but that, it's been like that though. You you can't help people out. To but but people are still people still have pure hearts. You know what I'm saying. So it's going to happen. But you know what I'm saying. Karma Karma's an old lady. You know what I'm saying. And that that rhymes with witch. You know what I'm saying? It's going to come back on you. You know what I'm saying? Just charge it to the game. It's going to come back on them. And before we move on to Transformer, quick question. You know, um, especially for C's. We all have different streaming apps. We all have different stuff. How many different passwords does everybody have for their stuff? Shit, a lot. Everything yeah. got a different password. I don't use the same password for anything. Better than me. It's... I ain't gonna lie, man. He's better than a lot of people. Cause not ninety nine percent of my shit yeah. got the exact same password. And I asked that question for a reason, see, because niggas, you got some of the most, bro. You the craziest password. You the president of the United States, because some of your passwords, nigga, be off the fucking chain, nigga. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, bro, what? what? Man, I'm it's on Instagram. I, I tried to log in this nigga prime one time. I looked at the password. I was like. This yeah. shit don't even make sense. <laughs> this is just letters and numbers. Uh, never, never, never mind. Never mind. I ain't, I ain't even got a time. I'm going to do it for you automatically. It does, but then you got to just, you got to have it, remember it. And then so if it's in your phone, like, and then, but if you on the TV, it's like. That's uh, kind of the thing, though. So I, like, don't, so I don't use that when they say, do you want us to make you this strong password? No. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> they, the, submit the password I gave you, man. The problem is we got, too, it's too convenient and you got all these accounts for different shit. So it's like, if you don't need it or you don't use it, don't make the shit. It's kind of like, it's crazy. So, so how many, how many people have been on, that been on like, uh, or your computer are saying, it says, oh, you need to change your password because it's been, it's been compromised. It's been on the black web and then it's like, man, I'm up all that. I don't care about this. <laughs> Let me lock in my shit. Man. I, I know, I know I'm guilty of that. I'm like, <laughs> I changed my password by like one symbol. 
Yeah. I don't even take that much. I don't even take my that much. It ain't even that much support to me. You want you you want you want my prime subscription? You got go ahead. You made a deal, nigga. That's how I mean. Like, if you want to see these big beautiful hoes, I be looking on Instagram. Go at it, man. These hoes for everyone. Hey man, speaking of hoes, man. So yeah, we all talk we talking about City Star last year. Who's City Star again? Um she was like one of the most him? she was one of the first talk about him. Yeah, she was one Don't of the Don't be most. disrespectful. She was one of the first. Know your pronouns. Um, transgender, you know, in Hollywood or whatever. She dated Darius McCurry from um, the show Family Matters. She allegedly said she had a relationship with Chingy, and she's been with other people in the industry. So she had a dick. This is this dude with a she dick. She used to have a dick. She chopped it off. Okay. What but she was with get... people before she got the dick chopped off. Yeah, but we got to talk about Adam Adam Twenty Two. Well, ain't, ain't his name Adam Twenty Two? Mm-hmm. No jumper. Yeah. He, what he, What he said? What What she told him said? Oh yeah, you, you we can go to the office. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And he basically was, you know, ready to do that thing. Yeah. I mean, if you was to look at her, Juice Man looks like a regular woman, but yeah. she was born a man. Okay. Um, it recently came. So out, she had a pussy and a dick, or she just had a. a dick? She she had a dick, but then she chopped the dick off, and now she got a pussy. She had a sex change. Okay. Full on transformer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So basically, in the 2000s, when Chinky, Chinky was popular with all his songs like Right There and Pulling Back and all the other songs that he had in the mid 2000s. There was a rumor that he was fucking with uh, Sydney Starr. He came out recently and said that fucked him up. He lost millions because he couldn't get booked at venues because of the culture we had at the time. And, you know, the music industry kind of shunned him or whatever. And Sydney Starr had apologized, I guess, once or twice, made fun of him and said, man, since, since he want to continue that bitch, hey, how about I give him a million dollars since he's talking about all the money he lost? Um, but I got tears, man, because, bruh, it, why are you lying and saying that the niggas is fucking you, that they not fucking you, when you know the stigma behind that shit, first of all? And second of all, we all know Hollywood is Hollywood. Like, there's a lot of motherfuckers that, like, bro, I'm gonna be real. I, I'm not trying to bring this nigga name up, because cause I'm trying to show, throw hate at him, but if we was to ask everybody at this table, I have been knew Dwight was on some funny shit. I knew he was on some funny shit when he was in Orlando, because he came off like he was a funny nigga. So it's like we we been knew there was plenty of niggas who was on some funny type shit in Hollywood. So it's like you you ain't got a lot. Like there's plenty of niggas you could have hooked up with in Hollywood. You probably did hook up with a lot of niggas, and you probably never named dropped them. You didn't have to lie on this man Chingy, because I ain't gonna lie to that man. I wouldn't want no you know transformer or just a gay man just to say yeah man. I but TZ was in my spot last night and he blew my back out. I feel some type of way like hold up, bro. Don't, don't, be, don't be throwing no salt on my name, bruh. Mm-hmm. Juice man. Tears and little tears. That's just fucked up. That's, 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 that's a real fucked up situation, man. Uh, so Chingy didn't have nothing to do with this shit. He t- what, basically what happened, he took a he took a picture with her at a concert. Okay. And then later on, they asked her about the picture. Like, oh, how y'all were y'all? And she lied and said yes. So she lied. Yeah. Yeah, she fucked up for that shit. So mm-hmm. she ain't supposed to pay that nigga that meal shit on GP. She or get sued one. Like, and then the meal ain't shit compared to how much money Chingy could have had. Like, this shit's fucked up, man. Yeah, man. So it's tears, man, because it's a fucked up thing. Because now, like, shit ain't even got to be true. It's just the fact that somebody made, said something that people take it and run with it. So it's like, you know, hey, sir. You shouldn't have fucking lied. Like, why are you lying on people? So I, mean, do. I mean, that's the sad part about the situation is Sydney Star lied. Chingy said that it was a lie. The only reason why we believe Chingy is because, guess what? Sydney Star came out and said, yes, I did lie on the nigga. I wanted attention back in the day. Like, we lived in such a fucked up society that if Sydney Star would have never admitted to lying, really? you would have people online saying, Man, Chingy fucked that nigga, man. He just lying about it. Pretty much, yeah, man. I, I got I got church situation just because because she lied on him and she gained proper she she pretty much came up off the lie and he came down off the lie. So it's like that's um I don't know what we call that, but that's um that's that's some foul business, man. That's what we call a Fortnite right there. Fuck nigga. Yeah, Sydney Star, you use a Fortnite. City Star, you the fuck nigga of the week. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> man. Hey, man. So, speaking of some fuck nigga type shit, well, at least to some people's opinion, 
So imagine your grandma, your granddad, <clears throat> or somebody in your family has a lease to an apartment. They pass away, and now you're being sued for the money they owe on it because them dying broke the lease. Where this grandma passed away, you know, and the tenants and the, and the landlord's basically was like, well, y'all owe us the money because she broke her lease by dying. That's not right. We'll see is the state this in because this ain't Georgia. ACs, tears no tears. Man, tears, because it's some bullshit, man. How, how, the only way you can't even get out of your lease by death. You go to jail, you still got to pay the money. You, you get sick. You move away, you run away, and move to another country. You still got to pay the lease. Now, now, nigga, motherfuckers are dying, and you still got to pay the lease. So I mean, it's some bullshit, and it's the fact that she had dementia. Also, it kind of makes it even more fucked up. So it's like maybe they knew she had a sickness and she didn't pay something, but it's like I don't even think there's any bylaws or anything in a lease where it says your family member, if someone's name else's name is not on the lease. When the fuck is anybody related to you or in your household? So it's they're gonna this this landlord company or the handlers are gonna get fucking sued for this shit. It's it's unfortunate, man. It's tears because it's some bullshit, man. Straight up. Yeah, I ain't got no chicks. I thought it was funny because it was like shoot, because they would they they're trying to sue a dead lady for some money that they not gonna get. Because like okay, yeah, you can you can you can sue whoever you want to sue, but. Ain't nobody giving you that four thousand dollars, like, cause, cause she broke her lease. Like, man, you, you can take that and, and shove it. You know what I'm saying? Man, I ain't, I ain't got no tears for them, but it's crazy. But I got tears for the family that they have to go through. Like, they, this lady can't even rest in peace because um, these folks are trying to backdoor her and, and trying to get some money from, I guess, her family or the insurance company or somebody. There's something they're trying to get some money from, but. They most likely they probably not gonna get it. Um, I hope they don't get it. And if and if they do get it, they need to change the laws, whatever this place is at, and and figure this stuff out, man. Juice man, what you got? That shit's terrible. I don't, I don't, I don't like that shit at all. Especially, I don't know what city or state that is in. Cause around here, you die. That shit. So does your debts. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it. Yeah, man. I got tears for the simple fact of. Like, and we see this a lot in just people just passing away. If you've had a loved one passed away, especially someone close to you, a parent or a grandparent, it, it can be heartbreaking to see how people become so money hungry over possessions and what's left in their bank account and, the, and like their insurance and all that. This is even like a hundred times worse because you're not even related to this person and you're just worried about the lease of the contract and the person passed away. Like, you should be just trying to give condolences to the family, saying, hey, we're sorry for the loss. And guess what? As long as the grandma basically was up on all her bills, paid every month, cool. The only way I would be cool with them saying, hey, we, we, we need this money is if, hey, she was behind two months rent. We was laying her slide because she was going to pay us back the third or fourth month. Can y'all cover the two months she didn't pay? But besides that, if it was paid up up to that month, I don't care if she had a year left. Man, don't be trying to get no money out of her, man. Like, hey, we sell the property and we rent it out to some other people and just cut your losses, in my opinion, because you can't be getting no money from no courts, man. That, that's that's how I feel about it. Man, talking about cutting your losses. So, this white woman posted that she actually found out how dirty it is to let people use your bathroom. And so she basically was like, she has all the guests in her house Go in her backyard. She got a whole area with a curtain. She gives you bags on your feet. She gives you a little shovel. The, the little shovel that y'all use to plant like plants and flowers and stuff. She gives that to her guests and stuff. And basically, you're supposed to do your business in a hole, cover it up, and put a stick in there. Yo, man. See, what's your thoughts on this? Man, it's, it's tears because it's some bullshit, man. It's like, why why even let somebody come to your house and you're going to do all that shit? Like, I, I understand, like, you don't want nobody funking up your bathroom or whatever. I mean, if that's the case, you know, just make it extra, like, put the, uh, like, hey, if you stay to clean the toilet, then I'll be like, all right, if I got to clean the toilet every time I use the bathroom, I ain't going to use the bathroom over here. I just ain't coming over here. But go outside, dig a hole in the backyard, cover the shit up. And then she may try to make it basically like, 
the strip clubs in Atlanta where she got snacks and a tip jar, a tip box, a tip box. So it's like all this other shit. Like that shit is crazy to me. I mean, I tears. That's some bullshit, man. Tears up, friends, man. Yeah, man. I ain't got no tears, man. For the simple fact of, I wish one of my friends would tell me to do some shit like that. I right, cool, bro. Hey, I ain't using the bathroom in the house no more. In fact, bro, we not chilling over here, man. <laughs> Like we not chilling over here. Like when we when we do the fight party, we watch the game, we do a grill out or whatever. Hey man, we not chilling at C's spot because C's want us to take a shit in the backyard. Like we'll chill at Rose spot, we'll chill at Juice Man spot, we'll chill at Vertizi spot because I ain't got time to be squatting over no hole like I'm a caveman, dig no hole, shit in a hole, wipe my ass, throw it in the hole. And then put a stick on it to basically like I'm I'm on um, Neil Armstrong. I'm putting a stick in the ground saying one small shit for me and one large shit for mankind. I got time for that shit, man. Yeah, I I I got tears for this lady that got this thing going on because this this chick crazy. We always talking about what's wrong with these hoes, man. What's wrong with this hoe? Because and then it, it's not. And then she said that the the, the booties. She recycles them. It's not like you get a fresh pair. You you got to use the same pair. You got to rinse them off and all kind of other stuff. Like, man, this this lady is crazy, man. Like, I know everything that she said was a lie because, like, who in the right mind will even be her friend? And it and and, and, and first of all, and second of all, how many? How does she have so many sticks in her backyard or people going to take poops? Like, people don't usually take poops in other people's homes on a regular basis. If that might happen maybe once out of a year, but that that's not a normal occasion. Like people don't go and say, "Hey, I got used to bathroom. I, I really got used to bathroom. <laughs> I can, can I use the bathroom?" Usually they're taking a piss, but not 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 dropping deuce. You know what I'm saying? I, it's been a rare occasion that I had to drop a deuce at one of my friends' house. You know what I'm saying? It it, it has happened, but on rare occasions, I could probably count it on maybe on one hand. Over the last maybe five years, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, tears for her because she need to go to the insane asylum. Hey, man, that's why we say what's wrong with these hoes. Yo, what's wrong with these hoes? What's wrong with them? Virtue, you got to tell us what's wrong with these hoes this week because, man, there's a lot of stuff going on with them. But, man, tell us what's going on this week. So last week, Women said they would choose a bear over a man in the woods. Yo, this is ridiculous. So there was this woman who said, I was watching a woman get robbed at gunpoint. And these two men was just watching mind their own business and they didn't help. What are men good for? What's wrong with these hoes? Man, hey man, I don't normally go first on this. But I got I to gotta, I gotta vent some steam real quick. Bitch, what is wrong with you? Like, first of all, I actually laughed because I, I thought about it like, hold up. You was watching a woman get robbed? Well, bitch, why you ain't Wonder Woman or Cat Woman? Why you ain't turn to no superhero and save the bitch then? Why you expect these two random niggas to say, because y'all always tell me, that's what I hear on social media. Women love women. Women support women. Women protect women. So why you ain't protect this woman from getting robbed at gunpoint? Second of all, Luke Cage got a lot of y'all hoes fucked up. Like, Luke Cage dropped on Netflix, and a lot of y'all hoes started watching this bald, buff-ass nigga who was bulletproof, and y'all started thinking, man, <laughs> every nigga must be bulletproof. Let me, let me keep real with you hoes, because some of y'all hoes need to hear this. Not, not all of y'all, but some of y'all need to hear this. All of y'all. A bullet will tear a nigga up just like it would anybody else. We are not bulletproof. Like, this ain't blank man, bruh, where he accidentally spilled some chemicals on his pajamas and found out that he could be bulletproof. No, a bullet would kill anybody, man. I'm not jumping into no shit where a nigga got a gun on a bitch that I do not know. We already told, bruh, we already told y'all earlier this year, what my bad, last year, we not stepping in front of a brick. If I'm not stepping in front of a brick, Rose ain't seen. What makes you think I'm going to step in front of a bullet? Y'all on some Dr. Seuss shit. I did not want the green eggs and ham in the house. I don't want it on a boat. I don't want it next to a goat. I don't want it downtown. I don't want it in the moon. If I'm not going to step in front of a brick, I'm not stepping in front of a bullet. See, 
Yeah, it's, it's and it's crazy because it basically follows up from from what's wrong with these hoes from last week. It's in response to it. It's like, oh, y'all had such so much to say about women choosing a bear over over being in the man, and it's like all this feminism, like toxic femininity, toxic feminism. It's just like, okay, first you don't want, you don't need men, you don't want men. You're better than men. There's all this other crazy talk. So it's like, okay, yeah, I asked us to leave you alone. Now we leave you alone, but you still want Captain Save a Hole, Captain, you know, a man, protect the woman. You want a, a man to be a protector? It's like, come on. If a man's not even going to fight somebody else that stuck him up, if I'm not even gonna fight somebody at gunpoint, I'm getting around myself. I'm like, what you want? Give me your wallet. Give me your phone. Hey, you got it, bro. You got it. Whatever. Take whatever you want to take. What the hell makes you think? What can a person that doesn't have a weapon themselves do? Rather than record or just watch, why the fuck you ain't called 911? Not at one point did you say you called the cops or you recorded it or something. You just, they're bystanders just like you are. So all the shit you're talking about, men. Being useless, it's like you are useless in the situation. You ain't do shit about it either. So it's like, how the hell you expect somebody else to cape up for a stranger? They could have been up the street. What am I running? Oh, he pulled out a gun. Da, 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 da. So it's what's wrong with these? What the fuck is wrong with them? Yeah, it's like it's like CeeLo said, you know what I'm saying? If you want it that bad, you can have it. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't about to get involved with it. I got involved with stuff when I was in college, knocking on, knocking on my neighbor's door, thinking they was getting robbed. Next thing you know, I'm getting snatched up in the house by the police because <laughs> the police kicked in the door. Yeah, it's the police in there. I'm thinking somebody robbing. I'm thinking I'm, I'm looking out like man, I can scare him up. Then next thing you know, then then I'm in there. Now I'm in trouble. Like so, it's like man, I don't, I don't, I don't talk to my neighbors. I don't help my neighbors. If, if I see something going on, I mind my business. It's like I live on a one way street and I stay in my lane. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't care about what's going on. Like I like if I see something, it's like they they say if you see something, say something. But I'm I'm so a quiet of a person, you know what I'm saying? If 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 I saw something, I'm not saying nothing unless it's somebody I know. You know what I'm saying? And, and now it's like it ain't somebody I know. It's gotta be family. Or it's got to be a close friend. You know what I'm saying? I can tell them my close friend's family. So it's, it goes the same way. So I ain't helping nobody. I ain't calling nobody. You're on your own. Because if it was me, I'm pretty sure I'll be on my own too. So stand on your own 10 toes and, and, and handle your own business. Because I, I, I ain't helping none of y'all hoes. And, 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 <laughs> and I'm done with it. Hey man, I got to ask a question, man. Let, let's dive into the psychology of it real quick. See, why do you think women think men should just step in the way of a bullet or a brick to protect women they don't know? Because you're a man. You're the stronger specimen. You're the stronger character of the species. So it's like, hey, you're supposed to pro protect and provide for every woman, no matter what. No, that's what's wrong with these hoes, because you put protecting to provide for your family. Oh, I don't know you. <laughs> I ain't protecting. I ain't providing for you. And it's it's one thing, like if you see, so like if you see, let's say you at a restaurant or something. You outside a restaurant waiting, smoking a cigarette, chilling, waiting to get a. You see a man just wailing on a bitch. Not not. Oh, he just smack her. Exactly. He wailing on a bitch. It's like you might be, hey, bro, hey, bro, chill. Chill, bro. Like you better than me, cause you know what I'm gonna do. We we've been in this situation. I think two weeks ago, what I said, let's go. <laughs> 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 no, I'm saying it's just like, hey, it's like, hey, 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 these people looking out their window. This nigga, this nigga, smash, smash me, smash me so quickly. The situation. I went to the next day. I got other people walk walk the house food. Yeah, I said, I said, man, take all of it, take all of it. <laughs> I said, no, let's go. I said, nah, nah, let them let them be the. It's like, man, they, if he if he if he want to punch this girl in the face, let him. Like, let's go. They got nothing to do with us. He was hitting that bitch like an old Robin Harris um, record. I smack you when I want her. When I, I smack you when I want her. Hey, man, for me personally, man, I I don't know, man. I don't know when the culture changed, bro. Because I ain't gonna lie, 
I when I watch when I listen to the discourse online, I see I see a difference between women. I see women that are married or in happy relationships say straight up, my man's not doing that. And I see women who grew up with good fathers say, no, nah, I don't want my father doing that. But the women I see saying that are the women who don't have, have not grown up with real fathers or have not been in healthy relationships because I, it just doesn't make sense for a man to put himself in danger for a perfect stranger. And let me make this clear. Shout out to the niggas who do that. Shout out to the niggas who think they Batman, Superman, Captain um, America, so, Iron Man. Shout out to y'all, bro. Good, good for y'all, man. So we giving shout out to Captain Save Holes now. Hey, man. Shout out to them niggas, man. Cause somebody got Captain do it. Crunch, oh, booty butt boys. Hey, somebody got to do it, and it ain't gonna be me. Man, ain't, ain't nobody be me. Shit, nobody do it. Let that whole take that beating. <laughs> you know. So hey, but hey, man. At the end of the day, man. Like it's crazy, man. I just. Hey, I just want to let the women know, like, would you be satisfied if a man that you cared about, whether it's your father, your man, or your brother, lost their life for protecting a woman they did not know? Like, would you be able to go at home and be satisfied knowing that? Or would you be happy thinking to yourself, I wish he would have just got on the bus or got in his car and just came back home? Because at the end of the day, bro, you, you got to make it home to your family, man. And, it, it, and it's like... Snatch the purse. What's the, what's the guy that the robber gonna do? Snatch the purse and run. He's not gonna stand there and be like, "Yeah, I'm about to rob everybody on this block." All y'all niggas, like, nah. Get get the purse, run, get the phone, whatever, and then. I but I I got I got advice for all your women. If y'all get into something and and a man is doing something to you, or yeah, just just call just call your father. My. Oh, my bad. I had them don't know where their father is. Bro. Yeah, I forgot about that. My bad. <laughs> These hoes barely know who their baby daddy is. Yeah, I, my my bad, my bad. I I I, I digress. Hey, a lot of you hoes ain't clean. A lot of y'all hoes be smelling down there. We saw a video of people talking about how often you should shop. There was various answers from once a day to three times a day. There's different scientific reports I've read. So we just got a simple question, man. How often should people shower? Seeds. So it's, it's it's to me it's not it's a cut, it could be cut and dry, but it's not. It's like, how much did you do that day? Did you go to the gym? If you went to the gym, you're probably gonna take more than one shower, depending on what time you wake up, when's your schedule. But I mean, just commonality, you would think you should probably bathe at least once a day. I don't care how clean your diet is. I don't I care what, what kind of products you use. I don't care how healthy you are. You fucking stink. Oh, you might be a bit, been a vegan for several years and you don't have a strong body odor. You can't smell yourself. Other people can. So it's common kind of courtesy. It's That's like, a lie. Well, it, it, well, I, well, for, There's some people that can't. There's some people that okay. can't smell themselves. That's what like you know how people be like, be like, motherfucker, you stink. And they'd be like, oh, I don't smell that. I'm telling you, you stink just like your breath stink. It's like I know I mean, you, you you become no, b- blind to the smell. Like, yeah, no like your house. Or you become you yeah, become you, eye blind. If you live with dogs, that that smell becomes so like typical, you don't smell it no more. But then I may come over and be like, Man, it's not like a wet dog in here. Yeah, so it's it's kind of one of the things for me personally, it's like at least once a day. It's just like, but if I'm like if it's summertime in Georgia, man, like Georgia, I'm sweating just going out to my car, man. I can walk in a Dollar Tree or whatever gas station, whatever I'm doing, I'm already sweating bullets. And you telling me you're going to go home after you're going to sweat swamp ass, you sweating, just walking outside, you and you going to go home and not shower? Yeah, I remember me and Vert Cheesy had this conversation that dog on Limelight one time. I'm talking about... How often should you shower or whatnot? We I don't know if we had that this if we asked each other that question, but we had a we had a conversation about a shower. You remember that Vertizi? Yeah, yeah. It was about basically people getting off work and going home and taking a shower yeah. before they you know hang out with their people. Yeah, so I but as far as like we asked the question like how often should you shower? I I would say at least once a day, but some people don't have to shower once a day. Some people can go a day or so without shine because it all depends on your like C says your activities or whatnot that you're doing or whatnot. 
So and and some people would because they have skin. Um, I want I want I'm not gonna say diseases, but skin. Um, Irritations, conditions. conditions. There we go. That's the word. Yeah, condition. They have skin conditions that that their skin dries out, or 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 it's just different things. That they have skin conditions that that they that they probably shouldn't um, shower, but maybe it's seven days in a week. So we say four times a week or whatnot, every other day or whatnot. But my 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 philosophy is. For you to smell good, I would say at least once a day. At least once a day. When we when we watch the video, like some of these rich folks are talking about, they shower like three times a day, and they, they shower and, before they go to the gym. Yeah, and, and my and my son does that. He he's like, hey dad, can I go to the gym? And I'm like, uh, yeah. Next thing I know, he's in the shower. Like, why are you showering before you go to I'm the gym? To smell good for these bitches. With that one though, I can understand because it's like, what if you like, let's just say he went to sleep, right? It was hot in the house. You ain't had an AC on or something. He was sweating. People sweat when they sleep. You wake up. You a little tart. You know, you a little, like a little B.O. Why get more funky in the gym? Yes, you're going to get dirty, yeah. but I'm saying that's when it comes to, like, common courtesy. You stink already, so now you're getting funkier. The person next to you on the treadmill smells you, so it's like, damn, this motherfucker stink. Like, for yeah, real. I mean, maybe, but I, I ain't going to be real. Like, if somebody that play, like, sports, play football, like when you working out with people, part of it is like, bro, I don't expect this to smell. Good. I mean, it's a timing thing too, though. It's but like if you have the time. How often? I, I I I I haven't been to the gym a lot the last year and a half. I do still have my membership, but because planning to finish some holes. Yeah. Um. Uh, but well, let me make this clear because I I see what you're about to say. Working out at a recreational gym like Planet Fitness or Gold's Gym. It's different than working out in like a sporting gym when it's like twenty dudes. Yeah, that's different. And, you, and y'all really getting a sweat. Like, like I just look at it like, bro, we working out, bro. I don't expect us. Like, it's almost like if you're a construction worker, I don't expect us to smell good while we while we doing our work right now. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but I I have never I I have never smelled somebody that smelled bad in at Planet Fitness. I don't. I don't know about y'all or y'all experiences, but I have never done that. In a recreational gym, no, because I'm not that close to people. Now, when I was playing football and I'm with people, it's hot as hell. We don't have the AC on. You got 10 people, 15 people that smell musky. Like, yeah, it may smell a little bit, but, I mean, that's to be expected. I understand the environment I'm in. I mean, it kind of goes back to, like, high school. You remember when you used to you used to pray that you had PE 6th or 7th period? Because it's like, imagine you take 1st through 4th period – but they had, they had showers. But I'm there. saying it was a lot of some, motherfuckers some that were not using yeah, them. Some people be self conscious; they don't want to shower. And some people just go. Oh, I, I know. Don't want to shower. I know. I never showered in high school at in in, in, in gym class. I know. I know. I never did it. But I, I um, you walk around stinking like a motherfucker. So it's like, it's but, just, but it's like no people. People. Some people have a odor, but. But I never really. There's people that, that you've been around that, but it's not because they've been working out. It's just that because they just probably a dirty person or whatnot. <laughs> don't know how to properly wash their ass. I, don't, I guess so, but I mean, it, it, it's kind of so. Here's like a cultural thing. So like you know, a lot of the, like hotter countries like uh, Brazil and like Africa, it's so damn hot they naturally just shower two, three times a day because it's so damn hot. It's oh, like. Really? So it's like that's like a common culture. I think part of it's cultural because it's like if you live somewhere where it's cold as fuck, of course I'm not gonna take a damn shower in the wintertime. It's like you expect me to go free, you know, get some water and then your pores are open, you get that's how you get sick. But yeah, it's like pneumonia and all that kind of stuff. You yeah. live somewhere where it's humid as fuck, like Florida, Louisiana, like you know, we all been to Houston, we've been to all these places. It's like, damn, you walking around the daytime, like, hey, let's go out and go do something. You walking around like Hey man, I might need to take a shower before we go to the club, man. It's hot as you know, it's humid out here. But 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 you you saying that, but from from my experience and for all of us, we always go out. I don't remember people well, it probably happened because we when we go out out of town, we always drinking and doing um and so we always drunk from the time we wake up. But I remember we take I remember everybody takes showers in the morning when they wake up, but then we do our things and then I don't remember people taking showers no more. For me, the only time I take a shower when I'm about to go out is like, let's say we was in Vegas or Miami and we walked around all day. That's what I'm saying. And we get back to the crib. But like, if I was chilling in the crib, now I would say this. I have seen like C's or 
you know, MGH take a shower and we just chill the crib all day and we're going to go out. Now, part of that is, you know, they, they some Cologne people. And when you read the studies of Cologne, like it, the best time to put it on is after you put lotion on, after you shower, that's when you get the most from it. So like, that might be why they do that. I, I don't really know. Now I will say this, me and C's talked about it. And the last couple of years, man, I've read different studies or whatever from different scientists or whatever. And some of them like from Bay from, I found out a couple of years ago, you're not supposed to wash your hair every day. Like apparently, oh, yeah. apparently it's some like oh. bacteria and some like fluids in your hair that you're not supposed to wash it every day if you want your hair to grow properly. Black people. Yeah. Now white people, I think they're supposed to wash their hair either daily or every other day. And another thing, me and TTK talked about it. I, I found out that we're not really supposed to use half these deodorants that we get from the store. Like we're not supposed to use, we're not really supposed to use deodorant like that. Like you know, when and it kind of goes with C's hint to that earlier. If your diet is a certain way, like you really shouldn't be using deodorant like that. Or you like, don't have to. Like, you, know, you don't have to. And that was something that I was like, I read that and I couldn't believe it. And I'm seeing, and you know, no, this is an actual scientific study done by real doctors. And then I read something, you know, after, you know, I saw this video that said, yeah, man, you know, the average person can shower two, three times a week. And that's perfectly healthy because there's apparently bacteria that's on your body that's actually good for you. And it's actually like studies shown that when you start showering two, three times a day, that actually does more harm to you than good to you. And that's what kind of like, wow, I didn't know that. That's That kind of was curious. But my overall sentiment would kind of be like to y'all sentiment, to be honest. When you feel like you need to shower, you should shower. Like if you feel like you've been sweaty, like I'm a heavy set person, you know, I feel like, yeah, I might have to shower more than my homeboy next to me that weighs 185 because I'm, I, I weigh a lot more than him. So I'm going to sweat sitting outside eating a burger at a restaurant. And I've been in a situation where me, I'm chilling with my homeboy. We outside. It's a mild temperature day. And I'm sweating. And I don't even notice I'm sweating. Like, my homeboy would say, damn, you sweating real hard. And I'm like, I am? And I'm like, yeah, I am sweating real hard. Like, so situations like that, to see his point, if you work in a manual job, like construction, yeah, you definitely probably should shower before you go out. But if you've been at home all day or you work in a desk job in an office and it's AC, like, yeah, you probably don't need to shower before you go to the club or before you meet a friend at a bar or a restaurant. Like, you probably good, you know, just leaving your area and coming straight there or whatever. I know, man. Just just talking about this got me itching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear it on the mic. Like, dog, I'm scratching, I'm scratching right now. Like, dog, it just got me itching just talking about it. But it's like, but but like 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 Vertizzi and C said, like, um, especially like Vertizzi said, I, I read some some things about with dermatologists, and that's what they say. Three, they I said four times a week, but they say maybe two to three times a week that people should probably that would be best for people when it, it doesn't hurt to shower every day. But um, that's just what that's what is what they say. They they didn't say what they did, but that is what as dermatologists that's what they recommend or whatnot. But um, are we going to pose the question like? Go around the table and, and say like I know me I I I I ain't, I ain't got no shame in my game like once once a day but it has been times where it hasn't been once a day you know what I'm saying like, like yeah it, I mean for me personally man like it really depends on the time of year summertime like I said I'm a heavy set person hmm. I probably wish out twice a day only because I'm a heavy set person to see his point earlier sometimes I don't we don't have the AC all the way on so I'm just sweating just being in the house so. I may shower, but during the winter time, definitely, I'm not going to lie. There are times during the winter time, I may shower every other day. Mm -hmm. You know, I may not shower every single day. I may shower every other day or whatever. But I can say this, though. It it it, it, it does feel good to, to take a shower in the morning, and and it does feel good to take a shower right before you get in the bed. That just, that just... I guess I don't know what it does. It just it just it just relaxes the, the the stress of the day or whatnot. And then you put lotion on. You you feeling good. You and you get in the bed. And you, and you and some people you and you sometimes you sleep better that ways. But I, I think you I think you said something that we didn't really even touch on. And maybe and if I even noticing it, like getting back in the bed. Like that's that's a question I have. Like how often do you clean your sheets too? Like, cause if you if you're laying in some clean sheets, mm -hmm. if I took a shower early in the morning 
and I and I washed my sheets that same day. Me laying in the bed, why, how did I get dirty laying in my own bed? But I I have seen stuff online where there are people who do not clean their sheets. Like they be laying in sheets for months. They be <laughs> they, just they, they put their head on pillowcases. Mm-hmm. Like Chris Rock did a stand up saying, "Hey man, when I got first got divorced, I was like, I couldn't sleep one night." Then I turned over and looked at the pillowcase, cut the light on. This pillowcase is filthy. You supposed to wash these things? <laughs> like, I do feel like that kind of adds to it. Mm-hmm. If you're not putting on clean clothes or you're laying in filth. Mm-hmm. But if you have a clean house, if you have clean clothes, if you have a clean environment, yeah, I do feel like some stuff like that, yeah, that, that, that contributes to maybe you have to shower more, maybe you can shower less or whatever. But to what you said, see, some of y'all don't know how to wash anyway. Some of y'all can shower five times a day. Some of y'all, hey man, I was watching the 5150 show, Corey, shout out to Corey Hogan and the boys. Hey man, he said something that made me laugh, but he kind of true said, to properly clean yourself, you got to violate yourself. <laughs> like, uh, Red Fox, you, you, you got to you wash your you, pants. You don't, have to, you, don't, you don't have to stick your finger in your butthole, but you, you have to wash your pants. Especially for them hoes, though. Like, oh, yeah. got, a lot of your hoes don't, pop, pop, don't, don't, <laughs> don't properly clean your pussy. You walk like, around with like, that stink. That and, thing stink. And, and, and I'm real. It's been plenty of times I done spread them legs and I thought I was a juicy crab. Like, but, what's but, going on, girl? But but also with that being said, like you can wash all day, but if you're not using the right soap. True, too. True, true. Because they dish, say, do, do not use dish soap for soap. Go like, buy a bar of fucking soap from the dollar store. Y'all remember, y'all remember that Instagram thing where when Buddy was like, Yeah, Shawty came over, it, it was like she said, can I use your bathroom? And then he, he went to the bathroom and like his socks was wet. Like she washed it with his sock. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, like, come on. I so but that that be the case too. But it's like, so we talking about washing and stuff. So are we are we are we using what we call the the, the sponges or are we using Face cloths or, or, or no face cloths? I mean, we, we had that conversation Ooh. before. And that's that's and, another one. And how effective is just hitting your spot sometimes? Like, yeah, I, I took a shower Monday. Tuesday, I'm not taking a shower, but Tuesday, I'm going to wash and use my arm parts and my privates. Yeah, like, we like take a whole bath. Is, like, how effective is that too, see? Sometimes that's what you got to do because the time's saying, because it's like, let's be honest, like, the hot spots really be where the funk comes from. Mm-hmm. Your, your, your privates, your feet. And your underarms, so it's like that's really where the funk comes in. It's like we talk about bo. Like if you only to shower two or three times a week, in between that time, we talk about are are you are you washing up? Yeah. Bacteria. That's where the funk's gonna come from. I remember one dude was like he said um uh, one of my homeboys said he said he he always took number twos naked because after he took a number two he was gonna get in the shower. It's, but it's like so. It, that's another thing, like, or because some people don't even know how to wipe. properly. In the words of Red Fox, you got to wash your ass. So it's like, so all all of that got to be in the thing too, like. So it's like, and then like with the soap thing, like I I, I read some I ain't written it. I saw on TikTok like they say Dove people love Dove. Like, I know I, I I use Dove in my home and and, and things like, that, and I use other soaps too. But in other body washes and things like that, but they say, "Oh, Dove is not a real soap." This, 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 this. And I'm like, and it's like, oh, you need to use antibacterial things like that. They were talking about the women and things like that. So it's like, but yeah, antibacterial soap is a good thing to use. But there's no way you could tell me that Dove ain't gonna get you clean. Like, come on, come on. Like, what what are you doing throughout the day that a, a bar of soap that they advertise as soap? Even though it's a, a conditioner, a conditioner bar, that's what they call it. Dove is a conditioner bar or whatever. Yeah. But how's that not gonna get you clean? Like what are what are what are you doing? Basically, you'll smell better if you use it. That that, that means you're working. you it's working. You'll smell but no, I mean that, that means you're working. Like like you 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 got a hundred dicks in you every day. <laughs> if, if if dove soap ain't gonna get you clean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean they, they got this thing where they say like it's the type of products we really use it because it's like that's what we yeah go ahead see it's, it's like all these products because you got um like shit called like sulfates and all this other shit like it basically does more harm like to Vert Vertizzi's point it's it does more harm for your body than it helps 
So it's like you got to be proper with the types of soaps you use. That's why you got people on the like, like motherfucking people that are in the uh, nature, na- natural. Like they say, oh, use Castile soap, use this type of deodorant. Because I mean, there's studies that say you're basically putting aluminum on your arms when you use certain deodorants. Mm-hmm. Most deodorants, antiperspirants. Like basically, think about it. the concept of antiperspirant. You're stopping your body from, from sweating. sweating. So mm-hmm. it's like. Is that good? Yeah, that, that's the thing. And with the um, with like the black, like they always say, people black people should use the black soap or yeah. the um African soap, African right. soaps and, and the turmeric soaps and things like that. Which I, I I started using some of those like a, I say about probably like two years ago. Like I mix, you know, heat in there. Like I still yeah. use like Dove and Native, you know, stuff that smells good. So mm-hmm. it's like you know I like to smell good. So it's like you know I'll use this. Sometimes I use that. It's like you mix it up. But like deodorant wise, like I use the no aluminum deodorants. It's like, yeah, yeah I got to change up how, you know, how often I shower and stuff. But mm-hmm. for me, it works. It's like, I don't believe in not sweating. So it's like, I'm not going to stop myself from sweating. And it's crazy now because now, like, I remember the, from probably about maybe two years ago, I started using like the um, the Dove spray, deodorant spray. Yeah. Yeah. After I got the shower, I was I, I would spray all my cracks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and now it's like they're advertising like these over like all body deodorants now. Yeah. But it's like they're advertising now, oh, do you can spray all over your body or you put this deodorant all over your body or things like that? It's like but it's like it's it's crazy, but it's it's all about the person and it's all about you should know like what would you say that people can't smell that soap? I, to a certain extent, I think people probably can't. But to a certain extent, I think probably people probably can. Because they say the first per- the first person that smell you is yourself. <laughs> it's just like if you if you sitting down, you can smell yourself. Like like damn, you lift up your arm, you're like damn, what does that smell? I know it's been times where I smell myself like, oh yeah, yeah, I I probably need to go take a shower or or, or, or what or whatnot. And like, Ain't, ain't no shame in the game. It's like it, it happens, but but it's like for some people that don't, it's like it's it's okay. But like, but I I don't I don't know. But but I, from my take, I say at least once a day. You know, yeah, as far as people, I don't I don't knock nobody for taking a two three showers a day. I don't knock nobody for taking. Everybody know their own body. You know what I'm saying, but. I'm just saying, take care of your body, you know what I'm saying, and and, and do what you're supposed to do. That's my take on it. Man. So so just real quick, I want to bring this back. Remember two things. It was, uh, I forgot to do, but it's one of these white guys with this, uh, you know, one of the big podcasts. And they're basically saying, they are white people. No, I'm not saying anything, but they were saying they don't wash their legs. Or their feet. Or their feet. Mm-hmm. They just let the water or the soap run down. Mm-hmm. That's nasty. Personally, I think that's fucking disgusting. Mm-hmm. Um, second of all, a lot of people don't believe in using washcloths. I use a washcloth. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure everybody else at this table does yeah. too. Like, yeah. Yeah, black yeah. folks, we use a like. But it's, it's been times where I haven't because it's like, oh, ain't no washcloths in here. I I don't put it in the washing machine or whatnot, and like, oh, I, it's, it's just straight soap. But also, it's like with with that with the washcloth things and things like that. Like, did you wash your back? <laughs> and like, like, like I, could, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, a young ninja like me tries to, but I, I ain't, I ain't out man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't, I ain't Spider Man. I, I can't reach all the way back there, but I know I try. <laughs> I mean, and then it's like, man, we could make this a like three hour conversation. Talk about, oh, do you use a washcloth? How often do you use this dry off with the same towel? If you, how if, often, how often do you change your washcloth? Do you use the same washcloth you use to wash your face with your ass? Your butt. Like, you know, it's like the things, it's kind of like, hey, I will say this. This is a history lesson. What the Moors that took over Spain in the 1000 AD or back in the Middle Evil times took over Spain. They properly showed them how to wash. There's like somebody coming from a hotter climate where it's hot as fuck in the Sahara in the Middle East showing Europeans how to wash their ass who were supposed to be the most civilized people, most knowledgeable, weren't fucking washing their ass. So it's like, 
history wise, other cultures, people take showers. They use different types of soaps, different types of products. Some use deodorants, others don't. So I mean, it's like, hey man, wash your ass. That's it. That's my my inner thoughts. Is wash your ass, man. Yeah, man. Um, y'all heard everything we had to say, man. Hey, just smell yourself. <laughs> Ask people near you if you smell. And then take inventory on. Maybe I need to shower. If you got to ask somebody if you smell, you, you probably need to need to know. do something about it. You do. And then properly properly wash yourself. So when you do take a shower or a bath, properly act, properly wash yourself the correct way. Get your feet, get your body parts. In the words of the fifty one fifty show, violate yourself, man. Make sure you get them spots and get them good. Like sometimes I wa- when I'm watching my dick, I'm be honest. My, I turn myself on. My shit get hard because I'm making sure I'm I'm getting everything on my dick so I can be able to use that shit properly. Pause. Yeah, no diddy. But check it. So um, I remember one time a dude told me it's like, man, if you lotion your whole body, man, that's gay. I'm like, that ain't gay. Like if you lotion your whole body, like do 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 men lotion their whole body? I I don't know. I have bad skin, so I know. I do, but I know people. Some people don't, but but he was like, man, that that's suspect. You lotion your whole body up, or you oil your body up. Like I don't see nothing wrong with that as a dude, but so people just out here crusty, dusty motherfuckers. Yeah, you want to put lotion on? You know, people be ashy. You know what I'm saying? But I know I don't see nothing wrong with. I mean, I have to because I got skin conditions and stuff. So it's like, yeah, I, I gotta use lotion. It's like shit. My feet ain't gonna be ashy. I knees ain't gonna be. I'm not gonna be actually. I'm gonna put lotion on some shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm with you on that. Um, Rose in terms of the washing. Hey man, for all the lotion, if you use lotion every day, cool. If you lotion your whole body, cool. I know for me, it just depends. But there's sometimes, there's some days when I do put lotion on my whole body, mm-hmm. and there's some days that hey, I'm wearing long jeans. I'm a lotion just my arms, cause that's the only and my hands, cause that's the only part people gonna see and shit. There's times, nigga, I ain't put no lotion on, man. My hands ashy, man. <laughs> it is what it is, man. I ain't, I ain't got no shame, and I ain't worried about that shit. But, hey, man, if you put lotion on, hey, good for you, man. So, um, we, 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 didn't, we, didn't, we didn't say what we was drinking on, y'all. So, you know, we had that um, Boosie Juice and that Uncle Nearest tonight, y'all. Pay them bills. Pay them bills. Yeah. Any um, closing thoughts, C's? Yeah, man. I mean, hey, we... Talked about a lot of shit tonight, you know, pretty good topics, man. If you looking at, you want to know what's in your products you're using, look up the Yuka app. That's U Y U K A, and there's also the E W G's uh health app. It's the U E W G, and I think the app is the U W G. But basically, go on the score store, scan what the fuck is in the products. It'll tell you. Oh, you pose a risk to this, pose a risk to that, exposures. People got a lot of skin issues. Like people, like you'll use a product today, you wake up with a rash. So, I mean, just look at what you put on your body. But at the end of the day, you know when you stink, you know when you feel dirty, wash your ass. I feel you on that one. Yeah, man. Um, we, talk, we talked earlier about two incidents where there were shootings. Hey, man, I'm just going to say, man, we just got to do better, man. We just got to do better as a nation. We got to do better as a people. We talked about the statistics in America compared to these other states about the amount of mass shootings. It makes no sense for us to have people going out to have a good time or just live their lives or just do regular day-to-day activities. And they have to be worried about people waving guns and putting themselves and their loved ones in danger. So, you know, go out here and vote, man. We got elections coming up. Vote for your local politicians. Vote for the big elections. And vote for people that's going to actually make a change, not the people that's going to just take money from the NRA and these other um, people that's promoting guns. I'm not saying to take people guns away. I'm just saying we got to figure out something, something, because if something's broke, you got to fix it. We can't just say we hope it's going to get better when we turn on the news every single week and it's somebody getting shot because of a stray bullet that didn't even have the name on it. This is this is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I ain't, I ain't got no closing thoughts, man. I th- I think I think y'all boys did a good job tonight, man. Man, got nothing but love for y'all boys, man. You know what I'm saying? No more black tears, man. We we here, man. If y'all if anybody needs some help, man, reach out to us. And we can we can point y'all in the right direction. In the words of Airbnb and Raquel, peace. Yeah, and we'll catch you at the next light, man. I'm back quiet.